Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Jim Swanson, and I'm the general manager of the Nanaimo Night Owls and uh, part of uh, the ownership group that has both the Nanaimo Night Owls and Victoria Harbor Cats. And the Night Owls, of course, uh, will start in 2021, June of 2021, at Siroxman Stadium and become an island rival uh, to the Victoria Harbor Cats, who play out of Wilson's Group Stadium at Royal Athletic Park. And we're looking forward to that very much. A lot of work already going into things. Um, back in, in March, March the 5th, actually, we officially announced the team for Nanaimo uh, for the summer of 2021. And then, you know, this little pandemic thing kind of hit and it took a little bit of time to, to get things set up so we could get the naming and the branding ready. And the Nanaimo Night Owls were born on July the 15th of 2020. And we're going to use the Nanaimo Bars as some fun on, on some days as well and, and have a little fun with that theme too. And we introduced Nate the Night Owl as our mascot. And I uh, want to thank Island Savings for being our founding partner. And uh, exciting times in Nanaimo as we continue to do meetings with uh, all sorts of people from uh, hotels. Uh, we've got our bus situation set up with Wilson's Transportation and the Wilson's Group. Um, it's just a lot of really fun things going on. We have a major announcement of a, uh, a, a platinum partner for next week and uh, we're excited about that as well. Uh, so a lot of really good things going on. We're already in touch with some players and uh, that's in part because uh, we've got a head coach in place and our head coach is already starting to do some uh, some work on that and the whole purpose of this here today is to introduce uh, the city of Nanaimo and the Siroxman Stadium uh, user groups and board and the fans of the Nanaimo Night Owls I'm uh, proud to introduce as the first head coach of the Nanaimo Night Owls is Greg Frady. Um, and Greg, I'll ask if you can uh, join us here on this call right now. And technology and border closings being what they are right now, this is the way that uh, that we get to introduce you uh, in Nanaimo. I know you and, and your wife, Rhonda, uh, were very excited to come on up to, uh, to, Ni to Nanaimo as soon as we possibly could. Uh, that's going to be delayed a little bit here, but we're going to get you up so you can get to see the city and, and so the city can see you as well. And, and uh, Greg, I want to, first of all, commend you on a smart looking golf shirt there. That looks really good. Uh, and we're, we're, we're glad to have that. We have a, a picture of you in one of our caps as well that we're going to show uh, here along this path. But uh, Greg, congratulations and uh, thank you. And uh, from me and myself and from our ownership group and our staff, and welcome to uh, welcome to Nanaimo. Welcome to the Night Owls. Oh, thank you, Jim. Uh, certainly have a smile on my face. It's it's a an opportunity that uh, I just couldn't pass by. It, 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 very seldom in life do you get to be the first first of anything, and it's something I've always really enjoyed. If I was in a position where I, uh, we were having the first of something, uh, but this is a first opportunity to be a head coach in the West Coast League, a traditional league. But then to do it on Vancouver Island, it's just, it's, it's fantastic. Um, my wife and I have just recently moved down to South Florida. So as you can imagine, it's pretty warm down here. So we're looking forward to some different type of weather in the midsummer uh, up in uh, Vancouver Island at Nanaimo. And we're excited. So you've had a chance to do, um, I know uh, in our talks uh, along the way here, you've had a chance to do some research on Nanaimo, uh, talk about what uh, you found out about uh, about the city and what uh, what it is you're looking forward to about uh, Vancouver Island. You know, I did find out some things that I didn't know, but I was uh, I reinforced a lot of things that I did already know. Uh, number one, it's beautiful there. Uh, it's a destination that everybody in the world is interested in going to Vancouver Island. So I'm extremely excited about that. What I did already know is there's a lot of really good people in Western Canada and on that side in British Columbia and particularly in the Vancouver area. We've had some opportunity to be in, be in British Columbia at Prince George, as you know, Jim. In the past, we enjoyed the people there very, very much. I think everybody's really excited about baseball and uh, the Night Owls. Uh, and I, I'm, ex I'm, I'm very excited about that as well. Um, my son, as you know, interned there with the Victoria Harbor Cats, and he loved the area. And so we have some family ties there and some experience and some history being in that area. And it's just a great opportunity, and I'm really excited. And, um, you know, I'm, an, I'm a sportsman. I like to fish, uh, and I know the fishing's really good there. And on my bucket list, Jim, is a, a halibut. I, I've got to get a halibut. And 
uh, a nice 25 pound salmon is always a feather in anyone's hat. So looking forward to potentially doing some of that. Looking forward to tasting some of the local food and maybe uh, trying uh, uh, different types of beers that I, I know that the area is really known for. And of course, I want to try the Nanaimo bars. That's, that's what uh, the area in, in Canada is really known for. Last summer, I coached a North American team at the Whirlport Tournament over in Rotterdam, Holland. And I had, uh, the team was made up of Canadians and uh, US guys. And uh, we called ourselves uh, the North American team. And uh, I had some conversation with some of my Canadian friends there, players, and we talked about uh, Vancouver Island, Nanaimo, Victoria. And the thing they kids kept saying is, that city is known for their bars. You gotta check that out, you gotta check it out. So I'm excited and, and um, I'm excited about the name, the Nanaimo bars, it's, it's, it ties with the city so much of what people, the city is known for, but I'm also excited about the night owls and uh, knowing the history of, of baseball and athletics there, it brings it all together. And I'm very excited to, to get the people on board and be involved. I plan on being part of the community. Both me and my wife will be there together. We will be acting part of the community. You and I have talked about um, getting to know some people and even extending that into some charities and doing some work there. So I plan to coach the team and be a viable part and a working part of the community as well. Yeah, you, you're a former Rotary Club president, as a matter of fact. So uh, being in front of a microphone, uh, you're not exactly a shy guy when it comes to that. I mean, coaching obviously gives you an opportunity to, to address people and, and, to, and to be in a leadership position. But uh, uh, I know that's one of the things we've talked about. You're, you're very well uh, willing to, uh, to talk to, uh, to companies and, and be part of, of, of helping them with, um, with, with looking to the future. And as we come through a difficult time, I think for a lot of people and I think there's opportunities to talk about positives and, and what I like to call the slingshot coming out of this and find a way to, to really get ahead and, and use this pause time to, to a pause. Though. I know that's what you want to do. It is. And uh, I'm a type of personality that likes helping other people. I enjoy that. And if uh, meeting or talking or sharing ideas of, with other people can help them or their company, I'm certainly all in on that. Uh, but what I really want to do most is make some new friends and get some new fans and grow the organization. I think people are going to really enjoy the product that we're going to put on the field. But the product, sometimes people think that the product is just about the players. The product is about the organization, in my opinion. And uh, we've had a lot of talks about this in the past. You can have the best coach, uh, but he's not effective if he doesn't have the best organization. And they're not effective if they don't have the best players. So we're going to try to make this work from all sides, uh, an organizational side, a player side, and a coaching side. And when they work in unison, it's really a beautiful thing. You know, Greg, uh, we've known each other back to, uh, we first made contact in 2008. We coached against each other, the World Baseball Challenge in Prince George in 2009. Um, your team came second in that tournament to a very powerful USA College national team. Uh, with uh, Garrett Cole and Yasmany Grandal, and we could keep listing guys, Sonny Gray, Drew Pomeranz, all those guys who played on that Trevor team. Bauer. And Trevor Bauer. He, Trevor Bauer got two-thirds of an inning in that tournament. That's how good that USA team was in that tournament. Colton Wong was on that team, too. That team was loaded. Christian Cologne was on that team. That team was a really strong team. And Tim Hank and Johan uh, took the ball and kind of shoved it on them, and, and, a, and you beat that team in that tournament. And um, I remember just, uh, you know, I was part of the, the organizers of that tournament as well, as well as coaching the host team. Um, but you and I just really meshed from that point. We've stayed in close contact. You provided players for uh, the Harbor Cats uh, who've been successful in, in Victoria. You understand what summer baseball is about. And a part of that is I, I want to give some bio background on you. You're, you played at Troy uh, University. You were a college baseball player. Uh, you coached uh, at a number of stops. And and uh, your, your junior college uh, days were, were extremely successful. And then to Georgia State as a head coach is what most people would know you for. Uh, 13 years and combined head coaching wins of 503 coaching wins. And uh, congratulations to you on that. At the same time, spending time in the summer uh, leading the German national program for 11 years, was it? 11 years that you were there? 11 years, Jim. And it was a great 11. You know, um, I, I think we've talked about this before also that, 
very seldom do you have a national team coach that stays with the national team for very long. It's usually a one year or two year stint at most. I stayed with those guys 11 years. It was a great opportunity for me and my family to travel and understand and get to see international baseball up close and personal, but not just international baseball, but to see different cultures and meet different people. And, and um, I think people really appreciate others when they see where they live, see how they live and what their challenges are. I think all of us as people want the same things and we just go about it in different ways. Uh, but that was a great time. Um, maybe some of our fans and listeners follow the Minnesota Twins, their center fielder, right fielder, Max Kepler, who is a big league all-star. He is a dude um, having another good year right now, off to a good start. The Twins have a good team. Max has been uh, amazing. His mom and dad owned the Berlin Ballet Company. And so he didn't grow up with just baseball and like maybe uh, our our kids in in the uh, Vancouver Island area or the Seattle area or wherever in the United States or Canada. We didn't have, he didn't have that opportunity. So he started playing late. And, and so we saw Donald Lutz played in the big leagues with the Reds. Uh, we went from having uh, a very challenging situation and not even really having enough players to make a national team that had a caliber to compete to watching a lot of good development and uh, guys growing up and then rising all the way up to the big leagues. But for most of the players in Germany, they're never going to play in the big leagues or professional baseball. So playing on the national team was a real sense of pride. And uh, they really learned to put their politics aside as far as club values and play for the team and the country. I think they did a really great job of listening to me. And I did a really great job of listening to them. And I think we worked in unison very well. And uh, we just bonded and, and it worked. And uh, I plan on taking a lot of the same strategies to Nanaimo, I used them uh, at my junior college at North Florida Community College. I used them at UCF, University of Central Florida, where I coached for years. And I used them at Georgia State. And I am happy to tell you that at every stop, there was a, a, there's a strong level of success there. And success is measured differently. Some people say, well, if you don't win the championship, it's not successful. I think as a, a very uh, a experienced coach, you need to know what you have and get the most out of what you have and consider that a success. For us this coming summer in Nanaimo, we're gonna put a product on the field that everybody can be proud of in the community. I want the community to come out and see the games. I want not only myself and our staff and our players actively involved in the community, uh, but we wanna be uh, a product where everybody has ownership and everybody feels good about that. And what level of experience and success that I have. I'm going to bring it to the Nanaimo area and team and share some ideas. And um, we're going to put this thing together in a way that that's going to be exciting and fun. And I think people are going to be able and, and, and really excited to come out to the park and see the product. Can you, can you talk about what the West Coast League, uh, you know, our level of summer leagues, uh, Cape Cod, you know, the Coastal Plain, the Northwoods, the, the West Coast League being the top leagues. Um, can you talk about what, in, what importance they have to a player, to a player's development, but not just that, but as a head coach of a Division One program for 13 years, how important that is to your program uh, that, that uh, you know, for, for all the D1 coaches out there, what importance does that bring to their program? Well, it's, it's layered differently for every kid. You know, if you're dealing with a pitcher per se, and he pitches a lot of innings. He doesn't need a lot of innings in the summertime, but he needs the experience of going to a new area. For instance, let's say, you know, of course, I coached in the state of Georgia and at Georgia State University, and a lot of my kids, 90, 95% of my kids were all Georgia kids. And you always try to give your local area guys the first opportunity if you can fill the team. Well, a lot of those guys have never been away from home. And even though they're living at at Georgia State and playing at Georgia State, they may only be an hour, 45 minutes, maybe three hours from driving back home. So the experience is not totally different being from Georgia and having a Georgia experience. So what you really want, particularly uh, is your younger guys to go away and learn to really be on their own, deal with different people, uh, maybe even a different, a, a completely different culture uh, and play in front of different fans and play with different players and, answer to different coaches and build themselves and take responsibility for their, for their career, like being in the weight room and doing those things on your own and 
and learning discipline and learning to listen to a new voice and how you're going to react to a new voice because that is the preparation Jim between what you're doing there on the West Coast League group uh, in Nanaimo and Victoria and others and what the coaches back at their Division One or Division Two school or junior college wherever their, their players are coming from is what their coaches are doing it's a combination which better readies them for professional baseball and better readies them to be a part of life. For instance, I had some kids from Georgia State come play for Victoria Harbor Cats. None of them had ever been to British Columbia. So that was gonna be an experience itself. None of them had been to Vancouver Island and none of them had been to Victoria. And so it's an opportunity to do something that they really had never done and may not ever have much opportunity to do again but they will value that for life and expand the way they look at the world and, and have a better idea of what's happening. And I'm sure that all those kids at some point will vacation again in that island with their families and show them with pride where they played and what they did through that. So I, those things, I don't lose those things as a coach. I understand the human element and, and appreciation. And then I have to help players and administrators and, and people around me, fans understand that there are things that are professionally done on the field that can't be compromised and respecting each other and the game is re uh, really important to me. Uh, playing hard and giving a great effort is really important to me. And uh, winning and losing with dignity is really important with me. And I think when you develop the person, you start to develop a better player that thinks broader. And those are things that, I, that we did with the German team, Jim. I've done with every stop along the way that – I'm going to try to infuse right out of the, right off the bat in, in, in Victoria area and then the Nanaimo area as well because that's a we're sister clubs, if you will, and uh, I want to see both organizations do well. But I think there's going to be a nice little rivalry that goes on between the two clubs. I I know Nanaimo and I know Victoria and I know they like to beat each other, so that's uh, that's going to be a lot of fun to watch this develop on the island and this island rivalry. Uh, Greg, I'll, I'll, um, I just want to give some information further about you. I mean, the German national team program when you took it over was barely a blip on the screen and it was a rise, uh, it got up to as high as 17th in, in uh, the world rankings. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's a product of your leadership and uh, winning 500 games in, uh, as, a, as a college head coach. Uh, uh, your 13 years at one school in Division One is, is impressive. The players that you've uh, been able to work with through that time, you've mentioned some of them through this. Uh, but I know one of the things that that uh, excited both of us about this opportunity for you to work uh, in the West Coast League and and be the first coach of the Nanaimo Night Owls uh, was the fact that it would allow you to to maintain and to utilize the networking uh, that you've had in place over these years when you're setting scheduling and and putting all the things together and, and competing against other coaches uh, for some of the best players. Uh, you now get to to reach out to that network and. And Nanaimo gets to be a benefit of that is, is exactly what we have planned. And I know you want to win right from the beginning, but that, that network is going to be a big part of, uh, of, of what it is you bring. Well, thank you, Jim. And I, I think if you stick around and you do something as long as I've done it, you create a network of people because you have to work with everyone. And I do have the unique uh, advantage of being a former Division I head coach which usually means I can have the ear for the other Division One head coaches because they realize I've been where they are and up against the same things. They understand that I understand um, how to handle players in the summertime. Uh, I've got some own, uh, I've already been thinking about some very unique ideas about how to run an organization in the summer because a lot of players that get to you in the summertime they need to work, but they're tired also. You have to figure out how to keep them fresh and keep them going. And the West Coast League schedule is a very intense schedule. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pro schedule. It really is. And a lot of young guys at the college level, no matter what they tell you, they have a very, very difficult time playing four games a week. Not, not six or seven, four games a week. So you have to figure out how to get them in, get them out, keep them fresh, keep them interested, keep them there. I mean, that's, that's the big challenge is keeping them uh, – because I think everybody's excited, Jim, for the first month of the season, and then everybody's ready to, to go home in the second month of the season. So finding the right guys and, and, and finding those guys that, that are 
that are field guys that want to be out there every day. Those are important things to me. I'll be able to really tap into a lot of the Division One coaches' opinions, and we can talk very open, openly and candid about uh, how we're going to handle a player. Uh, in the summer leagues, yeah, really you have two different types of players. You have players that's already played a lot that need to work on something different, and you have players that didn't get to play a lot that are up-and-comers that are really going to be good that need the field time and the experience. And so listening to the other coaches and knowing what plans they have for them and then merging that with our plans uh, is going to be something that I will tap into. And then not only just the college coaches, but, you know, I'm friends with a lot of international people too, and we may look at adding an international player or two if they can make the club better. Because if you are a Canadian or an American baseball player, you will be playing with international players if you're fortunate enough to play professional baseball. And I really don't consider Canada and the U.S. very much uh, different in the way we play baseball. So that's not really an international exchange of ideas. But when you get a kid coming from the Dominican Republic and you have to teach and talk about uh, the North American standards and the way you do things and how you conduct yourself, that's a totally different culture and a totally different way of doing things. Uh, the, the college guys, they don't really go through exactly the same thing. So it'd be good for them to experience that as well. Well, we're, uh, you and I have agreed to a, to a, a, what's a five-year contract, which is exciting for us and exciting for you. We're excited to have uh, you and Rhonda come on up. And I know uh, one of the things that, that you wanted to do is to, to give back right from the start. I mean, you haven't set foot in Nanaimo yet, and that's um, purely because the borders aren't open and we can't do that at this point. And uh, we had certainly planned to do this in person and announce uh, this and have you introduce to everybody in person uh, so we could shake hands, which we're not really supposed to do right now as well as we're trying to get this thing under control. Uh, but Greg, uh, I want to tell people what you've, uh, what you've done here. And um, this Nunamo First Nation, which is becoming a, a really good partner of ours, we're working on a special uh, First Nations logo of the Night Owls uh, with artist Noel Brown. It's a very exciting project. Can't wait to show people what uh, process that's in. Uh, but you've uh, you've decided that you want to get two season tickets and put them aside for uh, a program there. And I know what's what's close to your heart, and I want you to talk about that. But it's the the Quaymut Lelum uh, program that is intended for First Nations uh, youth and and women. As a, uh, I'll let you tell more about that and what what it is that's close to your heart on on this donation of season tickets to use at the Nine Night Owls home games. Well, thank you, Jim, and I also want to thank the Nanaimo Club for assisting me, too, to help that, that work. Um, of course, you want to be involved. If you care, you know, I think any human being, I think, I think most coaches all care, truly. Uh, they want to see the best for the players and the organization, but the coaches that maybe take that extra step are always looking to bring the community together and do something good. Uh, I grew up, first off, in my family, I have some Native American uh, bloodline in my family. So I feel particularly uh, moved by that. Uh, I always want to see women and children have opportunities and, and footing. Uh, every kid just really needs a chance and a little support. And I think no one is ever looking for a handout, but they're looking for a job. They're looking for education. They're looking for confidence. They're looking for the, the building of the person uh, in general uh, to make them feel whole. Uh, this is a way that right off the bat we can partner with the community and uh, I think people can feel good about that uh, in the area. Uh, we're going to have, uh, we'll, we'll kind of name the thing maybe uh, co coaches for kids and we'll have some kids out at the park, um, moms and kids, and we'll do what we need to do for them to have the opportunity to see some really quality baseball. But besides that, meet some really quality people. And, uh, you know, things I've done like this in the past, the players were asked to be a part of that. And at first they were a little awkward because they didn't know really what to do or what to say or how to handle it. And I always said, just be yourself because the privilege that you have as a player is really uh, something that you may take for granted a bit. But if you back up and sit on the other side of the fence, you're just in awe. You're, you're like, wow, uh, I wish I could do that. Maybe kids think that. So the, the players that I've involved in things like this in the past, I started off a little shy, maybe a little awkward, but before long, fast friends and involvement and then relationships that continue. 
and a good word for a child can change a life. And I really mean that. And uh, that, you, that you don't, that's not regional or uh, continental, that's worldwide. And uh, so we want to make sure that uh, we're doing our part. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a baseball coach, but I'm also a human being. And I like to see uh, and give to where I'm at in the community. And I, I want to thank Jim. I want to thank you and all the people in the club uh, for, for working with me and, and having ideas and thoughts of how we can do that and how we can make it better. And uh, let's do that. I was so impressed uh, at the announcement that uh, the, the different levels of people and um, the Native Americans uh, that you had there was, was extremely impressive. And I look forward to getting to know those people and uh, what their culture and how they do things are. And I uh, want them to know they're always going to be welcome out of the park. I can tell you, Billy Yoakum is excited to meet you, Chief Wise uh, from the Sonoma Band, uh, First Nations Band, and it's um, it's going to be exciting to to integrate uh, so many things that are just uh, so natural to that uh, environment and that and 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 the market in Nanaimo. In Nanaimo, it's it's excellent. Uh, so, Coach Greg Brady, uh, to recap here, uh, uh, first head coach in the Nanaimo Night Owls, uh, five year contract. Um, we're going to uh, get some media in touch with you here, uh, let fans talk to you and have a conversation with you. And uh, we're excited to have this. We'll get you up to, to Nanaimo as soon as we possibly can, yourself and Rhonda, and give you a chance to, uh, to come on up and, and uh, to, to, to meet people and, and have them meet you. And, and uh, um, it's exciting for us. And on behalf of uh, uh, the staff and our ownership group, uh, we're excited to have you on as our head coach. And, now I guess the next steps are we uh, we recruit some players and we fill out a coaching staff and uh, we get all those things in place and I think people are going to like what they uh, what they have to see um, with uh, with a, a Greg Frady coach team in the West Coast League. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Uh, I'm really excited. My entire family is excited and we look forward to living, working, and playing in that community. Thanks, Greg. And uh, we'll we'll just kind of we'll we'll take off from this for a second. We're going to reconvene uh, with another Zoom call. It's kind of the way things are done these days. These all these Zoom calls. Uh, I know some people want to have some questions for you between the media and some fans. So uh, thanks for this, and uh, uh, we'll talk to you here back in a few seconds when we reconvene on our next Zoom call. Thank you, Greg, and congratulations.